All right, welcome to this part six of our discussion about software redundancy for S7 300 and 400 PLCs. If you've missed the first episodes, take a look. There's a link in the description up there. Go and take a look at the first episodes so you can catch up with where we are right now. Okay, let's get on. The last episode, we looked at the hardware configuration, what needs to be done with the hardware. And we spoke specifically about the addressing scheme of the slaves, whether we're going to have N and N or N and N plus one. We spoke about whether we're going to choose MPI or a Profibus DP for discussing for connection between the two PLCs. And we spoke about this idea of being contiguous. So we're going to continue with that today and take a look at the software side of things. Right, so for the software configuration, We're going to be looking at uh, the two different PLCs and seeing what goes in where. So we have two PLCs, PLC A and PLC B. And we'll see where these numbers come from in the following episodes when we, when we discuss how we're going to set up this whole thing. All right, so in each of these PLCs, there's an OB1. Now, some of you may have been reading in the manual and discovered that uh, they talk about using one of the um, interval processed OBs, OB36 or OB38, to run the, the redundant program. But the main idea is to separate the main program from, from the non-redundant program. But what I've found is that running it like that is very slow. And so running it in OB1, but taking care to keep this, keep the different programs separated is the best idea. All right, so let's take a look here. In both of these, there's some non-redundant program. And the same in the other pro in the other PLC as well. It doesn't have to be there, but it's, if it's there, you use it. And they take care of their own housekeeping and whatever. So each of these non-redundant sections of the program will be specific to that PLC. But there's a section of the program that must be identical to both. There's a call to SWRZYK. And in there we call an uh, instance DB. It's called IDB. S W R Z Y K. We call that function block with that um, instance DB. Then we have FB and, and uh, FC and what, 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 and a couple of, then some DBs. DB, let's for argument's sake call it 106. And DB 107, DB 108. These are all global and instance DBs for these FBs and FCs. DB 109, and they are contiguous. DB 110, it depends on how many you need. You do as many as you require. So this is all part of the redundant program and this will be called in one of the two PLCs. Whichever one is in control of the outputs, whichever one is calling itself master at that time. At the end we do another call to the same function block and we call the same instance DB. This is a little bit different to what you normally see in a normal PLC because typically you don't call the same function block with the same um, with the same instance DB in two different places, but for this specific application you do. All right, so non-redundant programs are unique, but this section of here is identical in both PLCs. Right, then there's some housekeeping we need to consider. We have got uh, a DB, remember we spoke about in 
previously when we were talking about the, the software, uh, when we were talking about how this thing works, we have some DBs to take care of the operation of sending data backwards and forwards between the two different PLCs, and we have some information to transfer for the non-redundant programs for both PLCs. So let's take a look at those. These DBs do not need to be sp specifically uh, contiguous. These can be any DBs you want them to be. Um, that doesn't really matter, although generally I tend to keep them all lumped together with these. So we've got a DB. Uh, work no and let's call it uh, db 100 for argument's sake then we've got another one db send no it says db 101 a db rcv no let's call it db 102 and then that is for handling the data transfers between the two PLCs. Then we need another two. This is DBA to B and O. Let's say DB103 and DBB to A and O. It's called DB104. These DBs need to be set up and uh, the first three, the red ones, you only need to specify which DBs they are. The software redundancy will take care of how how big they are and what size they need to be. These two DBs, you set up what they need to look like. You set up the addresses, you set up the symbols, you set up everything that you need in that DB. And then you only need to know the exact number of bytes in those two dbs. You need to know the two bytes and you need to know the numbers of the two dbs. That's all you need to know from that side. <clears throat> There's two more dbs that I like to use in my programs. One I call it SWR constants. And that can be any number you want it to be. Um, I normally use it as a high number, so it's normally uh, DB300. And then there's another one, SWR status. Uh, let's make that DB105. Um, I'll show you exactly what happens in these in the next in the next um, video. We need to go into some detail about all the constants we need. This is for operating in OB100 for the call for SWR start. So we need to tell we need to tell the software redundancy all about which DBs we're using, how big they are, uh, where where our I/O is, where it starts, where it ends. Uh, what our Profibus addresses are, we need to keep all that information ready for the next section. All right, then for the software redundancy status, inside this, um, this instance DB for the software redundancy cycle, inside, this is, inside that IDB there are some words which carry information about the status of of uh, the software redundancy and you can control the software redundancy to some extent from there. So if you need to have a, a switch that switches one PLC over to the other one so that you can do some maintenance on it or you want to switch the power off in the cabinet or whatever, you can force transfer of data across and you can also use the information in there to send to an HMI so that the HMI can show you the current status of the of the program. I don't like using information directly out of an instance DB that's directly 
using information and instance DB is normally frowned upon. All right, so that's enough for this for this episode, and we will go on and take a look at the configuration of OB100 and the call to software redundancy start in the next episode. We'll see you there. If you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. Um, there will be more coming. And thank you for watching.